Hello, everybody, wherever you may be, from coast to coast and sea to shining sea, welcome back to Ham Radio Live. It's Tuesday, November 2nd, 2021. Great to have you along for the ride. We'll go over CQ Worldwide today, talk about it, explain how it worked, and maybe show you some stuff. Plus, we'll throw a couple trivia questions in, give you the results of the October trivia question game, and it was razor thin. (laughs) From the four winds of the world, wherever you may be, away we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Shack in Oregon. Happy Tuesday. It's nice to see you. My name's Larry. My call sign's Kilo 7 Hotel November. You know, I wanted to get it earlier. I was having problems. It's all of a sudden, like, nothing worked. And I'm like, what is going on? There's no camera inputs working. And then I lost the audio. <laughs> I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. I'm really careful about this stuff. It's like, I don't want to mess with it because it, it takes time to do it. Anyway, the whole pers- purpose of what we're doing, the whole purpose, the whole purpose. <laughs> of why we're here this is a radio talk show just we'll look at it that way it is we're all part of it around the world people come and join us and i'm grateful for that and we hang out and talk about our favorite thing which is radio but we really want to get you in ham radio too contact a great big radio society okay someone like the radio society of great britain find them at www.rsgb.org hit the contact us bar they will find a radio club near you and help you get licensed also in the u.s the american radio relay league at www.arl.org. If you're up in Canada, the Radio Amateurs of Canada at www.rac.ca. In Japan, the Japan Amateur Radio League at www.jarl.org. If you're in Australia or Tasmania or even somewhere else in the world, just hit the contact us bar. They'll do the work for you. They'll help you find a local radio club. The Wireless Institute of Australia, the oldest of these five clubs, by the way, www.wia.org. Want to hit me up? With a question, a comment, or a suggestion, hit me up at CQ Ham Radio Live at gmail.com. And if you'd like to help out the channel financially to help get things working, just, you know, sometimes things break. We're still trying to replace the mic exciter. You know, I just keep on, you know, we're waiting, we're saving up. Hit us up at PayPal at proverbs356 at me.com, or you can hit us up on Patreon at Ham Radio Live. Want to say some welcomes to folks around the world. It's always an honor. My mate Sean, welcome back to Echo Zero. X-Ray, Bravo Tango, he's the first one in. It's the Roadrunner applause. Welcome, Sean. It's good to see you, mate. Happy Tuesday evening. <laughs> it's been quite a trip lately. I got a great story for you. I really do. Hi, Daniel. Good to see you all the way from New Hampshire. Thanks for honoring us by coming. It's always a better show when you're here. It really is. You have some great comments. It's nice to see you, Daniel. Good afternoon to you. Rod is here from the state of Pennsylvania. Whiskey 3, Mike Papa Golf. Hello, my friend. Mark Taylor, that's a first-timer. From the UK, my goodness, Mike Seven X, sorry, Echo Sierra Sierra Mark, welcome. Nice to meet you, mate. I'm sorry I missed up your call. Mike Seven Echo Sierra Sierra, love the call. That's pretty cool. Mike Seven S, that's pretty darn sweet. Gary Strong is back. Hi, Gary. Good afternoon, mate. Whiskey Nine Papa Papa Yankee is here. Welcome. Good to see you guys. A very very happy Tuesday. Don't forget this Saturday. Alex will join us live from Cutler Bay, Florida. His call sign, Whiskey 7 Hotel United. And we're excited to bring him along for the ride. It's going to be a fun show. Talking about, you know, how he came here from Cuba, how he started his ham radio stuff, and how long he's been in ham radio. This is going to be a neat show. If you watch Alex's content, and I suggest you do, please find him. He'll be on about three hours, four hours, or I say four hours. And uh, just hit him up. Just type in the search bar on YouTube, W7HU, and you'll find him. Then coming up, and I've got the times right. Yes, finally, the times are right here. <laughs> Jeez. DX for 49 years. <laughs> Just figure the times wrong. Oh, boy. Lloyd Farrington, his call sign, Mike 5, Lima Delta Foxtrot, will be live with us at 1900 UTC on Saturday, November 13th, talking about the historic contact from the Mary Hare School for the Deaf for 10 kids to make contact with the astronauts. That's such a brilliant and an inspirational story. That's Lloyd in the blue shirt. And we're honored he's coming onto the show. I mean, that's a huge honor for me. Will Jordan joins us from ICOM North America Saturday, November 20th, 1900 UTC. Bring your ICOM questions. You know, he's going to answer them for you and he'll help you as well. So please join us for that on Saturday, the night, the 20th, excuse me, for Will Jordan, Alpha Alpha 4, Whiskey Juliet. Then a big show too on the 23rd, Richard Stubbs, 
from MFJ. Rich is my mate. He is. He comes on at 1900 UTC. That's noon Pacific in North America, 3 p.m. in the Eastern Time Zone, 8 p.m. London. He's going to have a discount code for you if you want to buy some MFJ gear for Christmas. So, you know, make sure you're ready and join us. And you can always use those codes, too, you know, if it's after Christmas. So, hey, Bob's here. Hi, Bob. That's from Cancer Treatment. Bob, it's nice to see you. I hope you're feeling well there. I know it's going to be a long day. as four plus hours of infusion today. <laughs> Cliff Boltz joins us. Hello, Cliff from the state of Virginia. Whiskey Delta 4, Oscar Bravo, Papa. It's always good to see you. A nice comment from Sean. Hey, Bob, hope you're okay, buddy. You see, that's the way this works. You know, when my when my pop left, by the way, on the on the on the call sign, the Vandy call sign, still not there. And the FCC says it takes between 14 and 21 business days to be able to get the call sign, but I think it'll be sooner. He's he's close. He's close to change it to a two by two. So that should be fine. So okay. All right. Before we go any further, I gotta do this because it's kind of funny in a way, because and it, of course it happens to me. Two things. All right. First. You know, when you tune an amplifier, whenever you tune an amp, I'm sorry, a radio that's connected to an amplifier, whether it be a tube or solid state, you never hit the PTT. Never, never. Okay. So I'm holding a microphone in this hand, which is the the rotator cuff one that just got repaired, right? I'm holding it and I'm reaching over here to turn the operate button on. So what happens is as I'm leaning over to turn, I push the PTT down blew all the finals in the amplifier. No kidding. CQ Worldwide was expensive for Larry. Yeah, yeah, very expensive. So we're going to send the ALS 1306 back to MFJ and have them fix it. And uh, thankfully, it's still under warranty. So that's good. They got a great guarantee there. Seriously, think about that. I've had this amp now for 11 months and it's going to have to have the finals replaced and they'll take care of it free. So I want to thank MFJ for that because and they'll do that for you too. It's just one of those freak accidents, literally holding a mic and actually keying because I'm reaching over with my left hand because I can't lift my right arm high enough. That's one story. The other story is this, and this is funny. This is a great story. So I go and I buy these Heil Pro 7s, right? Okay. And these are great headphones. I'll be honest with you. I love the phasing feature. On one side, they have a phase switch where you can hear it, where it sounds like it's kind of coming from all around you. Helps you hear weak signals better. Has a, a nice quality to it. Okay. So what's your one expectation? The one thing you want when you buy a product, right? You spend a uh, hundred whatever bucks for something. What's the one thing you want? You want it to work. Okay. So I opened the box, really excited because I saved it for CQ Worldwide. I really did. I want to use it for CQ Worldwide. Plus I felt, you know, it'd be good for the channel. We do live CQ calling shows. Okay. So I get everything all opened up and I'm missing this. This one stupid cable. And I get a hold of the high out. I said, wait, there's the thing's not complete. I mean, I have a foot switch that's really kind of nice. I mean, I really like the purple finish on and everything. But you know, it's got a quarter inch jack on the end of it. And there's no cable inside this box that takes care of a quarter inch jack. Not one. Oh, well, you need to yell at Ham Radio Outlet for that because they should have told you that you need the AD1-1C. Splitter. <laughs> I'm like, what? Man, when you when you buy a product, you expect to open it up, use it, and make it work for gosh sakes. And I gotta buy another cable. And then the, the darn buy, the darn thing comes and says, assembled by those who care in Fairview Heights, Illinois. Sure that that's sure. Okay. It is okay, I get it. It's my fault. I didn't realize that you need to have a cable that goes with the headphones that cost a lot of money to make it work, but that's been my luck lately. So, you know, just understand when I tell you I don't know everything, I mean it because that just is silly. But, you know, it's like, and I told them, I said, why doesn't this come in the box? Well, because there's so many different kinds of radios, which I understand. There are, there's many different radios, and that makes sense. But you got to have a place to plug the foot switch in. That's the problem. And I'm like, and then they told me, you know, some people get a hold of us and tell us that, you know, we send too much in the box and we should not send so much. Have you ever heard of that in your life? Have you ever heard of somebody saying, no, please don't send us more stuff. We'd rather have less in the box because, you know, that makes a lot of sense, right? 
Anyway, so that's my story for you. Thanks for listening. It's just one of those days. But I thought I'd share the stories with you because it's kind of funny. Uh, Not funny, but expensive. A blown amp and, you know, headphones that cost over, you know, 140 bucks. And then you're missing a cable that costs 20 bucks. Come on, really? All right, your A1A, I'll get you your welcomes in a moment. Looks like this. Here it is today. It's not bad. The solar number's down slightly, but we've got good conditions. Backside of the sun, 2887. Keep an eye on that. Down around 5 p.m. there on the sun. This is the backside view so this is not the view facing the earth this one is okay so on the back side 2887 looks like it could be a very very vocal player soon in our ham radio conditions here is your coronal hole map everything looks pretty good we do have some bright spots everything looks good but the sun has been very very active look at this over the last three days you have three Sorry, two m-class flares including a 1.5 and a 1.7 now we have some Big solar wind today, too. So this is why we've got high conditions. Look at this, K4, K3. Look at it. It's just it's been really bad. Here's the SFI 105, solar number 53. But look at the wind. The solar wind is the number down at the bottom below. Well, it's kind of in the middle of the screen, above solar terrestrial data. The wind is way up to 633.8 kilometers per second with a minus BZ latitude. So that's why the conditions are the way they are. That's why you see 80 and 40 are poor and fair because it'll affect the lower bands more than the higher bands. 20 and 30 meters are are higher, so they don't get affected so much by the D layer. The D layer is getting really hammered right now by the sun with solar wind that high and a BZ latitude that's negative. That's why we have a geomagnetic field that's unsettled. That that basically explains it, okay? Your ham radio and shortwave forecast for today, powered by ICOM. ICOM for the love of ham radio. Great conditions today for Hamish Shortwave Plus. CB will be open. CBDX should be open today. Daytime hand bands 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10. The Northern Hemisphere equatorial latitudes will get the same. Same for the South. Just 15, you know, remember 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10. Data will work 30 to 10 on latitudes tonight in the hand bands. Okay, you can get 40. It will work great, right? 160, 80, 75, 60, 40. All right, but they're not going to necessarily be great and the reason why is because the ionosphere is just unsettled that's the whole point with solar wind blowing that hard with a negative meaning a south pole facing geomagnetic field it makes it difficult to make calls on 40 meters or 80 75 or 160 so tonight might be a not so good night shortwave bands today 31 25 22 and 19 your nighttime shortwave bands for our shortwave buddies 120, 90, 75, 60, 49, 31, 41, 25, 22, and 100% chance of 19. In the mid and sud latitudes, so, you know, mid latitudes, tropic to tropic, and your southern latitudes, Argentina, Australia, South Africa, you'll get them an hour after sunset. Everything will be just fine and dandy. Okay, let's say hi to folks, because that's the whole point of why we come. Daniel, yeah, yikes, right? (laughs) Great. And with shipping, because fuel, right? Fuel's really expensive right now. Oh, my gosh. I don't even want to think what it's going to cost to ship that thing here and there. I'm going to guess $350. Really, $350 there and back, you know, just to get the amplifier fixed. <laughs> Terrible. Andrews Kyle, welcome, mate. Good to see you all the way in Norway. He says, hi, Larry. Maybe next week I'm going to take the exam for ham radio license. This is big news. <laughs> big news. Okay. Normally, I'm going to take the test end of this month. Ah, oh, I hope I make it. Best of luck to you, Anders. Seriously, best of luck to you in Norway. I know you're going to pass it. You've got a lot of radio knowledge. You do. Take advantage of that. Really, don't go in with the attitude of, oh, geez, I hope I pass. No, you will pass. You're a smart guy. You are, Anders, and I, I have faith in you. I really do. Daniel, oh, man, I wish finals were easy. Just do it yourself. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, me too. I was like, oh, brilliant. Nice. When they told me it was a finals, I was like, I kind of thought so, but I didn't want to go there. Great Lakes Reliance. Welcome, Rob. Good to see you from the state of Michigan. Kilo 8, India Bravo X-Ray. And for those that don't understand the show, this is a ham radio talk show, period. We talk about ham shortwave CB, and we talk about AMDX. We all are part of the show. That's why I welcome everybody and we put the comments on the screen because you're all part of this. That's what we do. It's kind of different, but that's what makes it special. It's for people that would maybe like to come into our hobby. 
My mate Andy's here. My good mate Andy in shortwave. I'm glad to see you. I hope you'd be here today, Andy. I, it was a little late, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I couldn't make everything work. Sorry, man. Mike Hotel, 3007 SW, all the way from Bristol, UK, checking in. It's great to have you part of the show, Andy. It's always better when you're here. It is. And Adam is back. Oh, gosh. Adam, great to see you, mate. Happy Tuesday. November Yankee 5 Echo. Good to see you. Martin at the night shift. He's working that night shift there and keeping us company. Pop Echo 9, Tango India Golf. Thanks for the emails, by the way. Martin, that was nice to hear from you. It was interesting after CQ Worldwide. I had people who I don't normally hear from, like Martin, who got a hold of me to talk to me about radio and the conditions. It's just been, it was such a special weekend. We're going to do a lot of CQ Worldwide today. Third Continent is here. That's VK Radio Ham. Welcome. Victor Kilo 3, Golf Echo Kilo, got a YouTube channel too. Please check it out. Scott from the north side of the tracks near the train station. Charlie, Kilo Charlie 2, Charlie Alpha Delta is in the house. Welcome, North Boston, New York. And you're welcome, Andrews. I know you'll do good. I know you will. You're a very, very smart guy. Very smart guy. Go in. And, and what I tell people in the U.S. is the same thing for people in Norway or the U.K. or Germany or wherever. You have certain things you know. So answer those questions first. There's going to be no time limit. So the things you maybe don't know or you're struggling with, give yourself time to reprocess, okay? Answer the questions you're confident on and then go back to them. And then answer the ones that you're pretty sure on. And then you just kind of go from there, right? It'll work just fine. So just take it slow and you'll get there, I promise. First trivia question for you today. And this one I got wrong. I did. Okay. Look at the question really carefully. Which state has the most hams per capita? Per capita. Is it A, California, B, Alaska, C, Florida, or D, Arizona? By the way, last month it was a tie. 155-155. First time that the North American continent did not win. So per capita means population, total population versus ham population. Okay. That, so that'd be figured in a California, B Alaska, C Florida, D Arizona. This is a hard question. I'm going to give whoever gets this right. We're going to go double points because this one's taught. This is hard. Okay. So think, you know, if you're in you, you know, North America, we normally get five, you'll get 10. If you're outside North America, you're going to get 20. All right. Let's see what your answers are. First one in. Oh, by the way, welcome Chandler from Arizona. Good to see you. Kilo, Kilo 7, Bravo, Delta, Juliet. Welcome to you, mate. Good to see you. Oh, my mate, Glenn Stevenson. He's one of my dearest friends on this show. And I mean that. Glenn, I'm glad your dad's okay. I mean that sincerely. Welcome, mate. All right. Sean in the UK, 2X Ray, sorry, 2 Echo, Bravo, <laughs> 2. It's really, all I have to do is read the, you know, Read what's there, Larry. Brilliant. Two Echo Zero X-ray Bravo Tango says C Florida. No, not Florida. Not Florida. And by the way, I got it wrong too. Cliff Bolts in Virginia. C. But I love the question so much. I had to put it on because it's such a neat question. Third one up. Rod in Pennsylvania. Whiskey three. Mike Papa Golf says B Alaska. And he's right. He's right. Yep. And, and here's why. Remember, it says the most hams per capita. All right. Here is the current, basically, for all the states listed, which is interesting because you know, California, Alaska, Florida, Arizona, all those states are listed on this list. Okay? So you take a look at Alaska. Their total ham population currently is 3,412. Okay? You look at Arizona, 22,181. California, look at that, 104,986. And Florida checks in with 43,907. But here's the deal. California's a population of 39.51 million, okay? And you've got, you know, 104,000 of those people, 105,000 almost, who are hams. Arizona has 7 million, sorry, yeah, 7,279,000, ,000, okay? Florida, 21.48 million, and Alaska, only 731,545 people live there. So with a ham population of 3,412, that's why the answer is here. It's why it's B, because versus the total population, they have the most hams per capita. There you go. All right. A lot of people answering that, by the way. Glenn answered D. VK Radio Ham with A. Scott with A. 
Anders says, C, because of bad, bad weather. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. <laughs> Adam with C, Andy New, my shortwave man. He got it right. He got it right, right there. He got B. He was Alaska. You're right. Canadian Maker Project. Welcome, Ron. Good to see you. Welcome back. It's always good to have you here. And here's Alex. Yes, good to see you, man. Good to see you. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay, man. Don't worry about it. He called me a moment ago, and I always have my phone on mute, or try to. Not always. I don't always get there. But, yeah, it's good to see you, mate. We're looking forward to having you on Saturday. That'll be a fun show. Gosh, it's going to be fun. That'll be from my dad's house, by the way, in California. We're going to do it live. So it'll be, it'll be from dad's house in California contacting Cutler Bay, Florida. What a ball. BK Ray, I'm just a guess. Yeah, I know. And Martin Pup Echo 9 Tango to Golf. B, no phone in Alaska, LOL. That's brilliant. And Andrews, you're not always wrong. That's a hard question, man, because it's per capita. And remember, look at the question. Look at the answer. I got it wrong, too. I said California. I did. Because I knew they had over 39 million. But then again, when you take a look at how many people are hams in California, 104,000, almost 105, it seemed like the right answer. But nope. I was wrong. All right, let's get into a few news items that are newsworthy for you to help you. Remember we told you about Tom getting that call to North Korea. Now, I did make a mistake on that. He did not make it during CQ Worldwide. He did it making CQ calls last week before CQ Worldwide. It's the value of making CQ calls because you think about it. If a person in North Korea calls CQ, they're going to have the pile up from Hades all over them making calls, trying to get that call. Tom just called CQ and it happened to be someone from North Korea who picked it up. Pretty special. The second most difficult place to work in the world is called Bove Island. It's literally a sub Antarctic island that nobody lives on. The 3YOJ Bove Island expedition says that it's going to be going sometime November of next year. So one year from now, we'll let you know more as we get closer to that, that trip. Cause that's a big, big trip in the RSUB news. National radio center needs volunteers. Now the RSUB national radio center, this is at Bletchley park. I'd love to volunteer. If I lived in UK, I, in fact, I would just want to see this. I so badly want to go. The national radio center welcomes thousands of people through its doors each month and introduces them to amateur radio. The society needs to expand the team of volunteers and is particularly looking for people who can be part of the team during the week. Okay. So if you're retired, this is such a great opportunity to help out and do something special. If you're interested in becoming a national radio center volunteer, you should enjoy meeting people and be prepared to work a minimum of one, preferably two days per month. That's not a very big commitment. That's really good. Plus, they're going to give you full training. If you want more information, please contact Martin Baker. His golf sign, his call sign is Golf Zero Golf Mike Bravo for further information. Find him at nrc.support at rsgb.org.uk. What a great opportunity. 3M issues a stop use inspection notice for self-retracting lifeline with anchor hooks. <laughs> this sounds really bad. Like, oh no. 3M's issued a stop use inspection notice for the 3M DBI SALA NanoLock self-retrieving lifeline with anchor hook. The company advises owners to remove the anchor hook product from service until an inspection is, is done. The notice pertains to specific versions of the anchor hook. 3M fall protection has identified a very low potential for the SBI SALA nano lock self-retracting lifeline. Say that three times fast with anchor hook. Sorry, I forgot that part to be assembled with a uniform top swivel. eye rivet an improperly formed rivet may become displaced from the top swivel eye. So if you want more information, find this on the 3M website if you're using one of these, right? Also, November ARL sweepstakes, Victor Yankee 1, Alpha 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 operation is on for 2021. Gary Hull, Whiskey 1, Victor Echo slash Victor Echo 1, Romeo Mike reports, 
that he's still hoping to be able to operate remotely as Victor Yankee won Alpha 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 from Northern Territories, a rare multiplier in the ARL November sweepstakes event. Holt says that a family health emergency has kept Jay Allen, Victor Yankee won Juliet Alpha from working on getting his station up and running again, but the situation has brightened somewhat and Allen is back at it. Hull has operated Allen Station in Whitehorse, Yukon, remotely from the U.S. to make the multiplier available. I've worked Gary Hull. It's a great call, and he's got a great station. Allen dismantled his station and antennas last year, but recently decided to make the station usable again. This is a really neat story. If you want to read more, find this, please, on the ARL website so you can find out more. All right, let's get back to your comments, and we will catch up with you guys, okay? Because it's always nice to do that. And I love I love Martin's Martin's comments. B no phone in Alaska. That's great. Rod finally got New Zealand for the first time working CQ worldwide. Well done, man. Good job, Rod. Wow, that's a great call from Pennsylvania. That's a long ways, you know. And that's the one I missed. I didn't get uh, Australia at the very end. We had like thirty five minutes of CQ worldwide, and my dog Miley was in here, and she like wanted to walk so bad. It was a good day. 60 degrees and sunny out and she's pawing at my leg and i'm like okay all right i'll stop looking for victor kilos and i'll take you out for a walk oh man it was hard to do though because i wanted that last continent i did i didn't get i didn't get antarctica but there you go anders in uh, norway i was thinking to buy a hyperflex 13 yesu ftdx 10 serum is only baby loop antenna because of my living conditions hoa I think it's called in the USA, but the antenna is very expensive. Yeah, Chiro Mazzoni, Chiro Mazzoni, I should say Chiro, Chiro Mazzoni, very expensive, high performance loops. Think of it kind of like an Opti Beam, but it's the Opti Beam loop, okay? Opti Beam's known for their high performance, same with Step by R. But, um, you know, I've, I've asked the company multiple times to review a product. I'll send it back gladly, but they just tell me that they're a family company. It's hard for them to do that. So, you know, HOA, man, I know the antenna, and I think it's a good antenna, but I've never used it. But from what I've seen, Andrews, I think it'll work for you inside. I think just be careful with MPE limits. Be really careful with, with your power and what you're running and how close people are to you. And the other thing to be careful of is if anybody's nearby with a pacemaker, it can literally shut their pacemaker off. So please be careful using an indoor antenna. As for the FTDX10, I think it's a really good radio. I think it's small. I don't like the middle knob because it's close to all the buttons. You hit the buttons and you change the VFO. It's just poorly designed, but it works well. That's the honest truth. You know, try it. Just try it. See how well you like it. It's a great radio. Nothing against that. The ergonomics are bad. Rob Sherwood says the same thing. So, yeah. So did, um, so did uh, Eric from Ham Radio Concepts. We all agree on the same thing. It's just the design of the radio is kind of a little bit wonky. So, uh, Andy, what's the 3M thingy with the anchor hook? I really have never used it, so I don't know. But it's important to Ham, so there you go. Daniel, New Hampshire, during the contest, I managed to contact Croatia. Unfortunately, only realized that after I was in the extra... Oh, no. You know what? Good for you for admitting it, dude. Seriously, I mean that. Because, you know... Like, I knew I couldn't do CQ Worldwide live. I couldn't do it because it's self-spotting, and that's against the rules. You can't do that. So, Daniel, I totally understand. And, and mistakes get made. And look at me. I blew an amplifier up by having my hand on the stupid PTT. And, you know, it happens. But what a great call, dude. You did it. And that means your antenna can work Croatia. That's pretty good. Andrews, you know how many meters you stay away if at 100 watt? Yeah, those are, they're great MPE calculators, Anders. I'll put one in the description section of the show for you. Once I get it all rendered, um, I'll put in the description section an MPE calculator for you, okay? It'll tell you how many meters are safe to be away from your antenna. Usually, the, okay, the higher the frequency you go, the, the worse it can get, okay? So once you get like 20 meters, there's a big difference between 20 and 40 a huge difference between 17 and 40. So once you get on the higher frequencies, the MPE gets shorter. So something to keep in mind, okay? Because right now 15 is pretty hot. And yeah, there you go. All right. And yeah, ouch, it was an ouch. That was a big ouch. Hurt the app. Like, no. Let's take a look. Okay, I promised you I'd show you this here. And so now I can. We'll show a little bit of CQ Worldwide. The, the whole purpose for people who are new or maybe have an interest in ham radio. Okay, there are... 32, sorry, 39 zones in the world. 
40, 40, sorry, 40 zones in the world. I said it wrong. 40, 40 zones in the world. And the idea is to try and catch someone from every zone. If you can, worked all zones. It's a great way to do it. But the problem is sometimes things don't work out. In the middle of CQ Worldwide, we did have a coronal mass ejection, which means we had a disruption come from the sun. It kind of messed up people for a long time, but people were able to make calls. So I'll show you a little bit of what I did during CQ Worldwide, just to give you an idea. And I did not do wonderfully at it. I just did okay. But my goal was to work as many countries as I could. My goal wasn't to work, you know, as many, you know, calls as I could. I could have made hundreds of calls if I did that. I was working for DX only. All right, let's take a look at a few videos real short. I'll make them as short as I can. But I also want to show you one thing about really knocking down the pass band to be able to pick someone up. This was the loudest signal, the loudest signal there was in North America, in the Northwest. It was coming from Alaska off of a multi-beam directional at 70 feet at 1500 watts. So it's a little loud. Please understand that's why. I could just could, you can't notch out that much power when it's that close. Hi everybody, it's Larry, CQ Worldwide 2021. We're gonna talk a little bit today. Since our channel talks about helping people in ham radio and getting people in, I'd like to show you one of the biggest contests of the year. It's called CQ Worldwide SSB. It's where we use our microphones to make calls all over the world. I want to show you just how packed the bands can be. And it's going to be noisy. For people who are not used to ham radio DXing, this may be kind of a jumbled mess. I don't mean it to be, but it's just how you have to listen to pick up a weak signal. So let's take a look at the 7610 by ICOM. We're using the DX Commander All Band Vertical. It has worked me the world in this contest. Let's take a listen. We'll go over the bands and maybe make a couple of calls, but I want to show you just how close everybody is. Here's the station right in here. Foxtrot 6, Alpha Julian, uniform 5904. That's the U.S. Thank you. Good luck. You are then Victor Echo 4, Victor Tango. Okay, so he's in Canada. Kilo 7, Hotel November. It's the only call I made to, to Canada. This was it. Kilo 7, Hotel November. QSL 5903, good luck. Okay, so I'm always this way. You got to just understand this is, you know, how I do things. You know, I just, I make sure and log right away, especially during contests, because some people are, you know, serious and they want to make the call. So we're going to quickly log him where he was here on 15. And uh, all we do really is everything's all set up. I've already got the contest in here. You can see that right here. I'm just going to change frequency. So we're 194. And uh, it will fill everything in for me. The rest of it's all done. So there's uh, my first Canadian call, believe it or not, which is kind of interesting. So let's get back to the rig. We'll see what else we can listen to. It, again, they're very, very close. Very, very close together. So let's take a quick listen and a peek inside. Okay, so the way I did this was I would go through, if I heard it was a U.S. station, I would bypass it. For the most part, I'd bypass most U.S. I just would. I'd try and get a multiplier once or twice, but I wasn't using any spotting assistance. wasn't using multiplier assistance. just simply was doing, you know, working radio. Now, I'm going to show you probably the hardest call I made, and it's loud, okay? It's very, very loud. It's a long ways away, but... It had the strongest signal in the band next to it out of Alaska. Take a listen. That's the station out of Alaska right there. That loud, that. And you could not notch it. You couldn't digicel it out. It was just too, it was right on top of it. Kilo 7, Hotel November.
Hear the signal barely in there? Start watching the band. Kilo Seven Hotel November. Alpha Lima Seven Alpha. The bandwidth is at the very top. Okay, very top to the right of antenna one. Watch it start to squeeze even less. It's right now, two point three kilohertz. Kilo Seven Hotel November K Seven. Kilo 7 Hotel November. Kilo 7 Hotel November. Thought he was calling me. Yeah, that's too much. As much as I'd love to make the call. Look how close this guy is. Watch. And it's a pileup. I can't give up. I wouldn't quit, even though that guy was right there. That's the biggest signal in the band by far. Where the M is, is where the frequency is at. So it's not centered, it's fixed. He's, I'm literally right, right almost on top of the strongest signal on the band. Kilo 7 Hotel November. QSL 5903, could you please repeat your call slowly, phonetically? There's a lot of QRM right next door to you. Again, please, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pick it up. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. 5903, you made my day. Good luck. You know what? <laughs> you know what? We made the doggone call, and that's the most important part. <laughs> that's that's working a receiver. You know, I, I told my father in law a lot when he was here last week. The difference between, and this is not meant to be disrespectful to anyone in Citizens Band. Please understand, I love Citizens Band. I think it's a kick in the rear end. I love it. I do. CAB DX is fun. It's great. But when you're in him and you're, you're talking two kilohertz away from a signal that's literally coming in at an S9 plus 20, and it's directed right at you, that's a tough call. And that call, by the way, just to know, was all the way to Finland. No, hold on. I gave it back through my log. It was close. It was, it was a very, very difficult call. Probably the hard. It was the hardest call I made the entire contest, and I just didn't give up on it. Um, hold on. Let me get it real quick because I, I'm, I'm sharing it with you only because for me, that was the call of calls in terms of working a radio and just sitting there and not giving up, not giving up because. You want that so bad and, you know, you do your best to try and make the call because, you know, making the call at that point almost becomes, you know, I guess the word I'm looking for is it becomes doggone personal then. That was to Spain. So tough call, but made it because of the receiver skills. And I'll tell you, the difference between the 7610 and the 5000 to the right of me is night and day, Okay. If you like to work a radio, if you like to really fiddle with it, and we'll get into this next show, the 5000, I think, has more tools receiver-wise than the 7610. That's just my opinion. It's because of working both during CQ Worldwide and having to pull in a signal that might be a 2 by 0 on both radios and being able to do it a little bit more effectively with the 5000. Even though it's a super hat, it works phenomenally and it made the calls it really did the final call i made by the way was on the 7610 after the last show and that was uh made three calls to japan but made one that was i was really thrilled for first time in the netherlands pop india three lima tango in fact when i go through all of my map 
And, and the, oh, I got to show one more thing. This is something else that happened. First time I've ever worked 10 meters. Kilo 7, Hotel November. Whiskey 6, bike something. Yeah, I don't think he's hearing us here, obviously, but, you know, do your best, right? Got a big signal here. Ten is so large. I apologize. It is a noise gating. I think that made this die away. Let me move over to this video here. It should be ten as well. No, nope, it's fifteen. But just listen, real quick. It's a short video. I believe the videos, could, the audio is going to be a little distorted here. Just a little distorted. Kilo 7, Hotel November. QSL 5903. Good luck. Very nice. And and that was a fun call. That really was. You know, because you're, you're, you're picking up prefixes you don't normally work. You know, it's something different because there's so many people on the band. That's what makes the Gear Worldwide SSB so special and why so many people wait for it every year because it's just a special time. That was my first call to France, by the way. That was my first time ever making a call to France. So, CQ Worldwide, it was a ball. The conditions were great until, what, Saturday night? It was Saturday night. We all of a sudden, everything kind of, let's just say Saturday night was a bad time. <laughs> it's not very much fun. Everything kind of went out, and literally, everything just kind of froze. And the people that even had the directionals and amplifiers were saying, like, uh, for example, Echo 5 again? Echo 5 again? You know, or, you know, whatever prefix, you know, or yeah, or suffix, you know, SXD again, Sierra X-ray Delta again, it became hard to make calls because we had just had the coronal mass ejection hit, but it didn't hurt us. Not, not for long. That was good stuff. All right. Let's get your final comments and we'll get out of here. And I want to thank you for coming today. This was really about CQ Worldwide and celebrating it and talking about, you know, what a great time it was. You know, my whole thing and... By the way, this is thanks to Mike. I'm going to show this real quick, and I want to show Mike's too. Guys, I think what Mike did, his call sign, Kilo X-Ray Sierra, De sorry, Kilo Delta 2, Sierra X-Ray Delta. What Mike did was really, really good. I was very impressed with Mike's, you know, what he did. Let me show you mine. This is my CQ Worldwide map, and this is what it ended up doing, okay? And I don't have the fancy little, you know, arrows that go everywhere, but that was mine. You know, and I was thrilled to make those calls. Hit every continent except for Australia and didn't get, didn't get, um, um, excuse me, Antarctica. Didn't get Antarctica either. That was kind of a bummer. But still, you know, it was nice to make these calls. And, you know, I think the best part was just the joy of it because the conditions were worth it. You know, the conditions made it worthwhile. So that part for me was great. And, you know, it took patience, you know, uh, wasn't easy. There was no part of it that was easy. That's for sure. Um, you just had to continue working. And sometimes it may take a long time for you to make the call. Seriously, it just might, might take a long time to make the call. But for those who were persistent, the calls could be made even on Sunday when things kind of went really, really bad, right? When everything went kind of crummy, you know, that was still a time to make calls. So, you know, a bunch to Japan, uh, my favorite one was, you know, being able to work UK, finally hitting Ireland. That was really special. Tons of work in the Caribbean, of course, South America, a bunch in Hawaii and all that. Let me show you Mike's. Here's Mike's map. This is what Kilo Delta 2, CX Ray Delta accomplished, all the way from Florida. Look at that. Isn't that brilliant? Dude hit the, the gigantic signal up in Alaska that was bombing North America. That was that signal that was really, you know, hitting the guy out from France. But look at Mike's work. Mike, he's only, no, look, he's a general. This tells you, even with general frequencies and an NFED half-wave antenna, 
what you can accomplish. Kilo Delta 2, Sierra X-ray Delta, well done. This is brilliant. This is great work, mate. Great work. And he did it without an amplifier, too. No amp. That was his work for CQ Worldwide. That's cool. All right. So let me get you up real quick, and we'll say, we'll say a quick hello and a quick goodbye. Local Stella 136 is in the building. Hello. Whiskey Papa for Juliet. Lima Zulu. It's an honor to have you, mate. Thanks for coming here from Puerto Rico. It's truly a pleasure. The, the, the honor is mine for sure. Yeah. Daniel, oh, yeah, 10 meters is pretty active up here in New Hampshire. It was great. 10 was really good. It was really good. And thank you. First France. I, you know, Sean, <laughs> I was thrilled when I hit the UK. When I got Ireland, I went down the stairs screaming at my family because it meant so much to me. I finally got the UK. Remember, my two goals were Australia and the UK. I finally got Ireland. Very happy to do that. Ron, unfortunately, had to miss it. Weather was bad, not able to play. That's too bad. Sorry about that, mate. And, Sean, thank you for coming. Station manager is calling him for dinner, and that means his XYL and 73 is to you as well, mate. Good to see you. All right. The whole purpose of what we do is to help you to try and get an amateur radio because that's where people get stuck. We don't want you to get stuck. Contact someone like the Radio Amateurs of Canada, www.rac.ca. They'll help you get licensed. Just hit the Contact Us bar. Don't forget, this Saturday at 1900 UTC, Alex joins us from Whiskey 7 Hotel Uniform. He'll be live in a few moments on YouTube, about three hours, making calls all over the world. Whiskey 7 Hotel Uniform, live with us from Cutler Bay, Florida, this Saturday at 19 UTC. Then coming up on the 13th, Lloyd Farrington, Mike 5, Lima Delta Foxtrot, 1900 UTC, about the historic contacts that were made from the Mary Hare School for the Deaf in the U.K., I'm an honored person to be able to do that show. Will Jourdain joins us from Icon North America Saturday, November 20th at 1900 UTC. Alpha Alpha 4, Whiskey Juliet is his call sign. And just before Thanksgiving, Richard Stubbs from MFJ, live with a discount code for MFJ Gear, Tuesday, November 23rd at 1900 UTC. Please join us for that. And also on the 27th, that's Thanksgiving weekend here in the U.S., Fred Dennett, Whiskey Whiskey 4, Lima Lima, joins us from BeLoud.us. 1900 UTC, that's noon Pacific, 3 p.m. in the East, and 8 p.m. in London. This guy's going to show you how you can run a super station, full tower, full power, full directionals, the whole shebang from your home computer and make calls from all over the world. My name's Larry. My call sign is Kilo 7 Hotel November. It's always my honor and privilege to host this channel, and it's always my, my pleasure and surprise the friends I've made from it. Thank you for being a part of it. Until next time, wherever you may be, God bless you. Thanks for watching Ham Radio Live. Goodbye, everybody. This is WCCB in Charlotte, North Carolina, signing off Channel 18. WCCB's transmitter is located at 2101 Newell Hickory Grove Road, one mile east of Newell, North Carolina, and operates on a frequency of 494 to 500 megahertz with a maximum authorized power of 2,100,000 watts effective radiated. Video and audio transmission between the studio and transmitter is by STL station KVF29, located at One Television Place, Charlotte, North Carolina, and operates on a frequency of 7,000 to 7,025 megahertz. And now, we wish you a very pleasant good night.